When Rob gave his vocation story, he asked all of you to pray for his father because it was his birthday. Well, I'd al- I would also ask you to pray for a young lady who, in- who influenced my vocation because it is her birthday today. Now, I know many of you are thinking, it's not the Blessed Mother's birthday. And you're correct. <laughs> my mom's birthday was December 6th, so it's not her. My sister's birthday is May 18th, definitely not her. Uh, I'll tell you who this, la- who this girl is later. My story starts with my family. We always went to Mass as kids. My parents were very involved in the church. They sang in the choir, were involved in different groups like the Knights of Columbus, Parish Council, School Board, every, and, and a lot more. We were always around the parish. My parents taught us from the time we were young to help people out, to be kind and loving to everyone we met. As I, as I grew up, I became very comfortable around the church. I loved helping the priests, getting to know our fellow parishioners. Long story short, I loved being at church. In second grade, second grade was a big turning point for me. I, f- I received my first Holy Communion. At that point, I really felt the call to be a priest and to help out at the altar. My two older brothers were altar servers, and every weekend at Mass, I'd be so jealous that they got to serve. And soon enough, I could have trained the altar servers better than whoever did, actually did, because I would watch them like a hawk the entire Mass, and afterwards, I'd tell my parents everything that they did wrong. <laughs> At home, I would play Mass with my sister. She had this little plastic pancake from her toy kitchen set that I'd use for a host. And we'd fill cruets with water. But I had everything. I had a little mini chasuble, stoles, altar cloths, cruets, pattens, gel, everything. It was awesome. When I finally got my chance to become an altar server, I loved it. I knew everything was in the church, and whenever anybody couldn't find anything, they would come and ask me. The church was my home. Over the course of a couple years as I continued to grow up, I quickly quickly realized that the other kids' faiths were not as important in their life. All the so-called cool kids were into sports and video games and movies and basically anything but the faith. As I longed to fit in more and more and to be part of that cool group, my faith was quickly swept to the back burner, and I now wanted anything to do with my life except be a priest. At this point, my older brothers had joined the youth group at the parish, and again, I wanted to join them, but I was too young. However, when high school did roll around, I joined that youth group as quickly as I could, and I loved it. I went to meetings every week, started going to different events, going on mission trips, and the youth minister and I became very close. And today, him and I remain very close. He knows probably just about as much as my spiritual director. The one thing I thoroughly disliked was how often he told me I should be a priest. Now, what I realized later was that my faith life was just a Sunday thing. I'd go to Mass with the family in the morning, the youth group at night, and that was it. Even even as I went to Catholic high school, my faith was not strong. I was so afraid of showing my faith to the others because it was just not what everybody else did. When we would have to go to school at Mass, I'd make jokes just like everybody else did, even though inside I was leaping for joy. High school was a mysterious time for me. I loved my faith, and I wanted to live it out but I was afraid to and didn't really know how. But my senior year, I thought I had finally gotten the chance. I joined what they called the Diocesan Youth Council. We we met once a month to plan the yearly youth leadership conference in the diocese, and it was fantastic. I met other young Catholics from the area, got to serve the church, and at the last meeting of the year, I met the girl of my dreams. So I thought. We quickly got to know each other, and we would talk frequently during the day. I thought this was fantastic. She's Catholic, and I want to become more Catholic. Perfect match. (laughs) We continued to talk and get to know each other, and eventually we decided to go to Easter Vigil Mass together. (laughs) Right? (laughs) A little bit of time passed, and not much more happened until the beginning of the summer. As this was going on, though, I needed to make plans for the following year. College was quickly approaching. And the last school I visited, I fell in love with, so I thought. I wanted to study architecture, wanted to play lacrosse, and I wanted a Christian environment. I found Judson University, extremely evangelical Protestant school, new lacrosse team, and a great architecture program. Again, sounds like a perfect match. Well, got in no problem, got on the lacrosse team, and thought I would love the Christian environment. This was all great, but a couple weeks Weeks after I signed up for classes, I went on another one of those mission trips with the youth group. After that week, just for some reason, couldn't figure out why, just didn't like my plans for school anymore. 
This was frustrating, and I tried to put these thoughts out of my mind, but God was too persistent. The following week after the mission trip, I went to the youth leadership conference. And there they were talking about what we're supposed to do, in our, do with our life and say, you know, do what makes you happy. And I thought about this, and I realized the happiest moments of my life were when I was with the youth group and on mission trips and at the conferences and stuff. So I thought, okay, this will be great. I'll do architecture in the fall, and then I can switch to, like, youth ministry or theology or something, and I'll become a youth minister. Now here's where the girl comes in again. I'm telling her all this about, you know, how I'd love to be a youth minister. And she says, you should go to seminary. <laughs> My response, oh, crap. <laughs> and probably a few other expletives. She told me why, and she told me to talk to her brother who was a seminarian. Now, probably the funniest part about this whole story is that her brother is sitting right in front of me. So I talked to Jim and asked him what seminary was on. <laughs> now, at this point, I was so lost. It was safe to assume that my hopes for a relationship with this girl were over. <laughs> and my plans for school were shot. I was trying to figure out what to do, trying to figure out what has always been in my life that I can run to and fall back on. And what I found was the Mass. I had nothing else to do, so I started going to daily Mass and praying afterwards. <laughs> it didn't take long for my love for the Mass and the faith to be rekindled, and I soon felt the tugs toward priest again. Later that summer, I had the blessings of going to Madrid for World Youth Day. It was phenomenal. I got to hang out with the seminarians, the priest, and the pope. I had fallen in love with the Catholic Church again. But shortly I returned to the States and went straight to my new evangelical Protestant school. I quickly realized that the school was not as Christian as I thought, but what they did have was a strong contempt for the Catholic Church. This made my time there very difficult, but I did not back down. In Madrid, I got this Vatican flag, and I hung it in my room in the exact spot so when you're walking down the hall in the dorm room, you cannot miss it. Just huge. <laughs> and kids would come in and would ask me about it, and I'd tell them what it is, and they would try and tell me how wrong I was, and I'd just, nope, it's right here in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that fall over break, I came and visited, I scheduled a visit at SJV, and as soon as I stepped foot in those doors, I fell in love. I saw how holy these men were, and I had finally found what I had desired my whole life. A place where I could be myself, grow in holiness, and have a great time doing it. I knew I was safe to be who I really was here, and be able to find the love of Christ that I needed so badly. My brothers, I beg you, never be ashamed of the cross of Christ. Never be afraid to live the faith. What the world needs now, more than ever, are people that are not, not afraid to boast in the cross of Christ, to live their life with zealous faith, that are willing to give their life to save people from their mediocre hedonism, and to lay down their life to save a thousand souls. Brothers, love the cross of Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ. <laughs>